So I'm going to talk about a little more in detail about what is data analytics is all about. So Sridhar and Raju gave you a big picture about what Zoho is doing. So I'm going to navigate slowly into the reporting domain by talking a little more in detail about what is data analytics and what people expect out of it. By the way, I am Clarence. I'm the product manager of Zoho Reports. Um, I've been here in, in Zoho for the last 15 years. And this is me, my, was my first company also. So I joined as an engineer, moved on up the ladder, and uh, became a product manager. So my area of interest, uh, apart from business intelligence, includes databases as well as product management. So I've been into all these fields for all these years. <clears throat> So let's start with a couple of facts that we all agree. So today, in the information age, so we all are swamped with data. Data does not just come from a single source, but a variety of sources. So you might have your spreadsheets generating data. You might have your business applications like CRM, HR, inventory generating data for you. Or you might also have some custom applications that you would have built which stores data in databases like Oracle, MySQL, and things like that. So you have so much of data that is getting collected. But just collecting data alone is not enough. We need to derive some insights out of the data. Without that, without deriving intelligence out of data, without deriving actionable insights, your data collection becomes sort of wasted. The effort on data collection becomes sort of wasted. So with these facts, we can come to a conclusion saying that you need to analyze your data. And only by anal analyzing your data, you can derive insights which can, you can take on to your business and act upon. So data analytics becomes essential. So if we all agree that data analytics is essential, let me go on to the next section on what is happening, what, what is, where is data analytics going? So what is happening in this industry and what people are expecting out of data analytics? People want the analysis of data to be very easy to do. So they don't want to know too much of technical knowledge. They don't want to have too much of technical knowledge. They don't want to learn querying. They don't want to learn databases. They want everything to be self-service. So they want to do it themselves. They don't need the IT helps, IT guys' help. They also want it to be cross-functional. So if you just relate to my previous point, so you get data from multiple data sources, so you don't just want to analyze only the sales information. You want to merge it along with your marketing information and see how is your campaign, the marketing campaign, impacting your sales. So how is your increment to the uh, to your salesperson, impacting the sales they bring in. So this kind of cross-functional analytics is becoming essential to make sense of the data that is coming inside. You also want it to be quick, because now decisions want it to be made quick. So you want to come up, you want to arrive at the decisions much faster, and don't want to wait for a, a month or a week to come up, to look at the reports and arrive at the insights. The next thing is you want to represent whatever you want to visualize in a very rich format. So there was a period where you looked at a static charts or static um, uh, summary reports where you could not interact. It was just static. It didn't give you any more things than what you see in the screen. So the users were not able to interact with it. So apart from just presenting them in a graph, it also has to have an immersive experience. You want to explore further by looking at the chart, clicking on, clicking on it, and looking at the data in a different way. So you need richer visualization. As we all work in a team, so it's not going to be just about a single person looking at the data and analyzing it. So we want it to be collaborative. So we want to work as a team, do analysis as a team, arrive at the decisions, so that you have the team backing on the decisions that you arrive. So you want it to be collaborative. And the last point is a single version of truth. So in the previous generation, if you had looked uh, about uh, reporting, you would have seen spreadsheet as being the most popular BI tool that was used. So in that scenario, so you would typically see people having their own version of spreadsheets, own version of the data, they create their own reports. So each of your uh, the, the team members would have, would be looking at a different version of the data set as well as different version of reports. So that creates confusion. 
So, and you cannot converge on a decision. So, what people now want is a single version of truths. Every team, every member of your team looks at the same data, looks at the same report, and takes, arrives at the same conclusion. So, that is becoming essential. So, these are some things that people out of, expect out of data analytics. That's what is the current trend. So, having spoken about what is the trend in data analytics, let me go on to the next section that will talk about what are the keys for effective data analytics. I have four things to talk about. So there are four key wheels for data analytics. The first thing is you have to know your data that you need to analyze. So before you start analyzing, you need to know what you want to really analyze. Do you want to analyze your sales data? Do you want to analyze your marketing information? Do you want to analyze your inventory information? What do you want to really analyze? So let's first know the data that you want to analyze. Then what you do is you identify what matters. So for example, let's say you're running a supermarket chain and you're collecting various information. You might have a point of sale system that has records the sales that you do. Then you might have an inventory management system which tracks your inventory. You might have an operation system which tracks about your employees, salesperson, all these things. So if this is the case, then you might want to do deeper analysis of your sales data. So you might want to know what is your year on your growth, what is your growth rate, what is your, uh, what, uh, what is your uh, uh, salesperson's achievement against the quota. So these are things that you really want to analyze. So you have to arrive at the metrics that you really want to measure. So that's what I mean by identify what, you, what matters. So once you do that, you get into representing that metrics in the right visuals. So you could pick up the right visuals, whether it's a chart or a, gra or, a, or, a, or a summary report or a dashboard or a widget. So what do you want to represent it with? So you identify the right visuals to represent your metrics. And once you arrive at the, at the visuals, then you start collaborating with the users. You inform the right people about the graphs and the charts that you have created so that they also get the insights that you have discovered. So these are the four important things that makes a data analytics process very effective. <clears throat> if you do this rightly, then you can build a very cool as well as effective visualization and analytics solutions for your business need. So let me go a little more in detail about each of the steps. The first one is know your data. So you just first have to start with identifying the data that you need to analyze. So it could come from your sales system, your support system, your finance, or your inventory, or any other application that you might have. So just pick what you want to analyze. So pick the right data sources. Then what you need to do is, like, you might have this data in different applications. Your inventory application might be different. Your point of sale system might be different. So though might, though the data might be residing in different missions or in, in different apps. So you have to bring them into a common store because if you want to do cross-functional analytics, the data has to exist in the same place. You cannot do, have that in disparate uh, locations. So you have to bring them to a common store. Let me take the same example of a supermarket chain. So I'm a sales manager. I want to analyze my sales with respect to my inventory as well as the performance of my salesperson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the data from a point of, my point of sale system as well from the inventory system and bring into my reporting store. That's my common store. So let me take a simple example. Okay, so the next top point here is blending your data. So here I have three spreadsheets. The first one is the data coming from point of sales. It has the sales records. It has a date, the sales guy who did the sale, the store city region, the product SKO code, customer name, sales and cost. These are basic records, uh, columns that you bring in from your point of sale system. The next one is you bring the data about your salespeople. It could be from your spreadsheet or it could be from your operating system. So where it contains the salesperson email ID, the name, the manager of the salesperson, experience, the sales quota that has to be achieved, as well as the salary. The next one is coming from the inventory system where it just has the SKU code, the name of the product, 
and the product category. So now you see these three different tables or spreadsheets comes from three different systems. So if you have to start analyzing this, you need to blend this data. So what we call as linking the data. So if you look at this particular table, you see the sales data is linked with the salesperson data through the common field called email ID. You know, the same email ID of the salesperson is going to be here. So this is a linkage. So you have to define the linkages that are existing in your data set before you start analyzing them, if you want to do cross-functional analytics. The next one here in this example is, if you look at the sales table, you have a product SKU code, which refers to the SKU code inside the product table or the product spreadsheet. So for every product that is getting sold, there will be a corresponding main entry or master record in this product table. So what you need to do is also define this linkage in your analytic system as a first step. So you bring the data here into the system, then see the relationship that is existing, link them before you start doing the analysis. Or else the cross-functional analytics that I was talking about, as, which is very important, is not possible. It's not possible. So this is what we call as blend the data. <clears throat> Once you do that, you can get charts like this. So if you look at this chart a little closer, you see the product category being listed at the x-axis and the sales on the y. The product category came from the inventory table. It was not from the sales table. And the sales was coming from the sales table, actually. So you are trying to merge these two things and bring up a cool chart. This is something that your reporting solution should enable. So if you want to do this kind of visualization. The next example here, if you look at it closely, I'm plotting the salesperson on my x-axis and the sales on my y-axis along with the quota that has been set in a red line. So you see a single analysis where the salesperson's, the sales done by each salesperson is plotted in a bar, bar in a column, and the quota of the salesperson is plotted in a red line. So in a single chart, you can see data coming from two different data sets getting merged, and you see a chart. So this is what is possible if you link the data properly. <clears throat> I'm just taking a simple example. There are more complicated things than the, what I've shown. So once you link the data, you need to prepare the data for effective analysis. So some of the things that you keep, typically do is you clean up the data, you remove the duplicates, you ensure that there are no spelling errors. So intentionally, if you look at, so it's, it's misspelled, so spelling, spelling errors. So <clears throat> you might want to format your data properly. So you have to identify the column types. If there's a currency data, you have to say it's a currency. You have to sp specify the precision of the currency, it means do you want to have decimal places, how many decimal points you want, all those things as well as proper labeling of your key metrics. So you don't want to have abbreviations, you don't want to have long names, because when you start creating reports out of it and share it to your colleagues, they should be in a position to easily understand what you share. So these are basic things that you do to prepare your data for analysis. Once you do all these things, you don't want to do this every time when you bring the data into your reporting system, into your common store. You want to automate this process so that the data comes automatically every time there is a change in your source databases or source spreadsheets. So you want to automate the entire process of pulling the data, merging them, linking them, preparing the data by cleaning all these things. You want to automate this whole process. So this concludes the first part of knowing your data. So let me go on to the next section. So the next section is about identifying what matters. So what I mean is identifying the key metrics that is essential for you to analyze your data or get the right insights. So let me start with some visuals about what I really mean by key metrics. So if you look at this chart, it's basically trying to plot two things. So it has a line which shows the sales that has been happening in 2013 and the sales that is happening in 2014. So this is what we call as a year-to-date sales. So you want to measure your sales of what is happening today with what was happening in the last year. This could be something that you want to need. You want to really see. 
So this, this could be one metric. So you have to do it sales. The next good th thing that you want to measure would be the growth rate. So you want to see the growth rate across product categories. So you want to see the growth rate in, in 2012 for furniture when compared to 2011. So what is, was your growth rate for 2013 when compared to 2012? So like that, you want to measure growth rate with respect to the product category. So this could be another metric that you want to really measure. Let's say you have an operation system. I'm just completely going to another application. So this is basically a troubleshooting system analytics. So let's say you have a customer support organization, which is really answering support calls, support tickets, and things like that. And typically, in your customer support organization, you sign up an SLA, the service level agreement with your customers. So you want to see how your team is performing with, with the SLAs that you have signed. So this is a basic chart which shows in each month what has been your compliance level with respect to the SLA. So so much amount of tickets or so much percentage of support tickets has complied with the SLA, within the SLA, within the SLA things. And there are so much amount of uh, tickets which has breached the SLA expectations. So this basically gives you a kind of a trend on how your support organization is doing, just looking at this chart. So this is something that you want to measure, the SLA compliance versus the breach request. So these are a couple of metrics that just highlights what you really want to measure. So before you start analyzing, you have to arrive at what you really want to measure from your data. That's what we call as key metrics. To do that, there are a couple of ways that you do in a reporting system or in an analytic system. So you might use inbuilt functions that are available in your in, in, in the reporting uh, software, so which can give you the way by which you can arrive this. You might write your own calculations. So you just come up with the formulas based on the functions that you already have and come up with a metric. Or you might write, even write an SQL query if you are a little uh, technical. So you might know write some scripts or uh, SQL queries to really come up with the data that you really want to measure. So these are mechanisms through which you can arrive at the metrics. And the, depending on the capability of the software that you use, these things either becomes easy or becomes complicated. So having spoken about knowing your metrics, so let me move on to the next part of it. So what you call as right visualizations. So you know what you want to measure, so you brought the data, you know what you want to measure, so you just define the metrics. Now you have to represent them properly in the right visuals. So that's what is all about visualization. So the first step that you do is, if you look at the various reporting tools that are available in the market, they give quite a number of visual components to represent your data. But it's very essential that you represent the right metric with the right visual. So people might get carried away with the dodge or a 3D pie chart and things like that, but those might not convey the, the metric in the right sense. So right, pick up the right visuals for the right metrics. So there is a session that is going to talk a little more in detail about that, that's coming up. <clears throat> the next thing is you have to also expose the right level of interactions in the visuals that you create. So I was just giving an example of what was, how was reporting, uh, reporting software um, uh, used previously. So you had static charts, you just looked at the chart, you cannot interact with it, you cannot comment on it, you cannot annotate on it, you cannot drill down on it. So these are interactions that you can enable to your consumers who are looking at the reports that will make it much richer and much uh, um, um, intuitive because they just are not looking at the static chart. This is, in this example, if you look at it, so I can highlight a particular point, drill down on, the, on, on 2014, and look at the sales, sorry, look at the sales in quarters. So this is basically, you started with a sales by year, and you are drilling down to look at the sales by quarter. So this is a basic interaction that can, you can enable in your visualization. Like that, there are so many things. You can comment on it, you can annotate on it. So by doing that, you enable much better collaboration and a much more exploratory experience for, for the users who are looking at the chart and come up with their own insights. So that's very essential. And once you build all the visualizations, then you need to assemble them into a very 
quick overview dashboard that what we call as a KPA dashboard. This is just an example. So it just gives you a, a, a CRM dashboard uh, which talks about, which shows you the leads, the total leads that is coming this month. So what, how many converted leads, one leads, lost leads, and the leads created across the last 12 months. So this gives you a quick snap overview of what the visuals that you have, uh, the visualization that you have created so that anyone can consume it faster. So that's very essential. So having talked about what do you mean by uh, creating visualizations, so let me go to the last step about who need to know. So once you create all the visualizations, you need to start collaborating with your users. You need to share them to your users. So that's what we mean by enabling collaboration. Here, the one important thing that you have to really distinguish is you have to segregate your users between who are creators and who are consumers. So there could be colleagues of yours who want to collaborate with you to create the reports. There could be users who are just consuming the reports. They're just looking at the reports, taking decisions, interacting with the reports, but not creating. So it's very important that you would segregate your users between who are your consumers and who are your collaborators. And the next very important thing is you want to ensure that you don't leak sensitive information to the wrong people. So you have to ensure that you share the right vis uh, visualization with the right permission to your audience. So, you, uh, so, so that unnecessary information does not get exposed. So that's very important. And as we were talking about, so we also have to have a single version of truth. So when you bring everything into a common store, and with, which has an online capability where anyone can access from anywhere, so you, the, it, the, the, the fact that you're bringing into a common store and the technology of being online itself enables a single version of truth easily. Because everyone is logging into the same system, looking at the same reports, analyzing the same data, so there is no duplicates. So you just remove that. And also leverage new means of collaboration because not just, not just uh, sharing, them, uh, sharing your reports through emails or, through, um, uh, or as a PDF or as a printout, so there are new means of collaborating on your, on your reports. It could be commenting on your reports. It could be chatting when you're creating reports. In the context of a report, you can have a chat session, talking to your colleagues who are working on the report. It could even be context-specific annotations. So for example, here, you look at, you can annotate on a particular point in a graph and say why this happened. So that everyone who's seen that particular visual or a visualization will be in a position to infer why that real uh, spur hike was. So these are new means of collaboration that is, that is getting into reporting software or into data analytics. So with this, I'll just conclude all the four points and summarize what I spoke about. So first, we looked at the problem and the need. So there was data swamp. We needed cross-functional analytics. We have to identify key metrics, we want rich visualization, and we want the process to be collaborative. So if you have to do all, if you have to solve all this problem, you need the four important things. One is you need to know the data that you want to really analyze. You need to analyze, identify the metrics that you want to really measure. You need to pick the right visuals, and also inform the right parties. So these are the four important things that you have to do. In Zoho reports, so we have built the software with this to enable our users to do all these four things effectively. So that has been our platform. So we have understood this domain deeply and been, have been investing on this for quite a number of years. And we, having known this, we want to enable our users to do this kind of effective data visualization and analysis with our software. And Zo reports has been in the uh, in the business for the last six years publicly, and we have more than five million dashboards and reports being created on the software, and we have a variety of customers, so more than half a million users logging in, and uh, quite a number of businesses using Zo reports. So with this, I'll conclude. So.